what Nietzsche is saying here, and I'm just, you know, I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to be gross at all or facetious or condescending. I'm trying to give his account credit. Um, is that we, the symbology has been lost, right? We've become too literal, right? It's the, this sort of literal interpretation is, has, has contaminated an understanding of the essence, according to Nietzsche. Number five, the teaching of the sun, and read 170 on your own, because 170 is a pretty powerful uh, note. The teaching of the son of man is the son of God, the living relationship between God and man, this personal relationship that I was talking to. This is made into the second person of divinity, the filial relationship of God and every man, even the lowliest, is abolished, right? So that the divine co-mingles with everyone, even the most horrendous, despicable human being. And similarly, we should, as God does, love even the most horrendous, despicable human being. Rather than thinking about preserving our, our kind and, the, and, and looking out for self, we have our interests on the most decrepit, the worst, the gutter of society. And for Nietzsche, this is this is completely. Why, why would you Why would you spend your time doing that? I'm not going to spend my time worrying about the psychopath, murder, rapist. No, I, you know I'm going to be spending my time on what I do best, which is which is this, which is why I spend so much time doing this. <laughs> um, last, salvation through faith, um, and namely that there is no meaning. Be, um, there is no means of becoming a son of God except following the way taught by Christ. Reversed into the faith that one believes in some sort of miraculous subtraction of sins, right? So the idea of salvation through faith, rather than saying that I am going to, um, and there might be some debate here. Uh, I do know a little bit of Christian um, theology enough to know that. There, number six might not be necessarily Nietzsche's strongest point, because um, I think contemporary Christians would say, no, you know, as God lived his life, Jesus lived his life, so would we. You have that little armband that says, what would Jesus do, right? Um, so the idea is, no, what would he do? So we should reflect back. But what Nietzsche is saying is, look, what you're reflecting back to aren't the symbols, aren't the eternal sort of truths, the eternal facts that codify and form, formulate the, the, the discipline. What you're looking back on are events within history, and, and you've, you've, Apotheo, you've, you've, uh, um, um, not apotheos, you've, you've divinized all of these acts rather than looking at the symbolism, right? Instead of talking about resurrection as a, as a new means of interpretation, as a rebirth, you've, you've looked at sort of physically pulling someone out of the dirt, right? So what Nietzsche is saying is that even, I think he would say, even in your attempt to look back, to do as Jesus would do, you're looking at the act. This is why I talked about act before. You're looking at the actions rather than the meaning informing the actions. And insofar as you keep fixating yourself on the action, then you lose an understanding of the essence, the meaning, which is what's key. Uh, and I don't know that anyone in the uh, Christian community has specifically addressed that. Um, and then divine punishment within Christian dogma, right? Um, 163 through 164, uh, let's see that. Um, he goes through and he talks about um, what you should admit to do, right? You should admit of no ground for divorcing your wife. You should make no distinction between strangers, neighbors, foreigners, and fellow countrymen. That point is all, you know, is brought up. And we should love everybody. Love everybody like my neighbor, right? You should be angry with no one, right? Um, it's, 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 this, it's this very passive, um, th this very passive anti-biological approach to life, right? It's this, it's this, you know, I'm going to turn the other cheek, I'm going to allow people to, to trample me, if someone hurts me, I'll, I'll, I'll turn, you know, I'll turn the other cheek, uh, the neighbor, I'll, 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 I will love everybody like the, my neighbor, even the most despicable person, and, and what ends up happening is, is you are perpetually punished for your actions. Why? Because you can't live up to that standard. So you are going to fail in terms of, this according to Nietzsche, you are going to fail in terms of your ability to act appropriately because you're going to get mad and cuss somebody out. So you failed. But if you try to conform and you let them cuss you out and you turn the other cheek, well, they're going to continue to cuss you out. They're going to continue to hit you. So your life is going to be filled with abuse. 
you're going to live a life of abuses because there will never be an opportunity for you to act meaningfully in the world. And he talks about Sodom and Gomorrah. I just wanted to put it in there as a reference. You guys can look at it on your own. The last thing is continually judging and condemning order of rank. Right. So that what ends up happening is that there is a continual, perpetual systematization of punishment and judgment. And what ends up happening is that the devotee finds himself in the physical world, in the real world, being abused because you're the weakest link. And people who are going after power and powerful people are not going to think twice about exploiting you in order to get what I need for me and my family. I'm not going to think twice about it because I don't ascribe to your system of morality. I don't see it as being wrong. If you're going to allow me to, I do my lecture, uh, just real quick tangent, I do my lecture on the state of nature. And imagine hypothetically an altruist who gives everything, an egoist who takes everything. I go to an altruist and I need water to drink and you have a last bottle of water and I say, you know what? If I ask her for water, if I ask him for water, you know, that water's going it's, to, it's, she's going to die if she gives me that water. But I'm also going to die if I don't ask her for the water. Well, I'm going to ask her for the water. And if she's going to give it to me knowing full well that she's going to die, well, she didn't deserve to have the water, you know, sort of, anyway. And that's, <laughs> that's how I'm going to end this section of Nietzsche. So, sorry for that abrupt ending. Uh, with that, I want to thank you for watching my videos. I'm Dr. Jason J. Campbell. Have a good day.